life our ears the spiritual ears to open up right now so that we may be tuned to your frequency to receive life in the name of Jesus Father, we stand against every perturbation, every distraction. We bind them and we command them to leave this place in Jesus' name. Lord, take over. Let humanity disappear so that divinity may take over. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say, Amen. Can somebody give Jesus a round of applause? Amen. You may have a seat. God bless you. We can't wait to finally enter heaven where we can see the King of Kings. Bible says we will see him with our eyes. I'm really encouraging you for you to not miss this opportunity. For you to not miss heaven. You may miss anything else. Miss money, miss job, miss whatsoever. But please, don't miss heaven. Amen. Amen. My message of this morning is titled Kingdom's Economy or God's Economy. Now, I will, I will be a little bit technical because I am going to borrow many technical words from the um, economy or the, um, the world economy so that you may explain God's economy. So I'll do my best to be as clear as possible for you to understand those words and for you to use them and for you to apply them in your own lives. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We have a, love, a long reading, but I think I'm going just to shorten it. It's a reading that we all know. I am just going to shorten it, but at home you can do the whole reading. It will be from the book of Matthew 25, verse 14 to 29. Matthew 25, 14 to 29. Very long reading. I'm going to shorten it. Can we please rise up on our feet as we are reading the word of the Lord? Matthew 25, verse 14 to 29. And I'm reading from the version NIV. The Bible says, again, it will be like a man going to a journey. Now, maybe let me quickly um, summarize this one or put you into context. Jesus was speaking about the kingdom. He was saying the kingdom of God is like, is explaining what the kingdom of God may be compared to. And this is one of the comparison of the kingdom of God. Now he said, again, it will be, the kingdom of God, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servant and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold. Another version they say, five talents. To another, two bags. And to another, one bag. <clears throat> Each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also, the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the one who had received one bag went off, dug a hole, and in the ground, sorry, dug a hole in the ground and his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled account with them. Now the man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold, see, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done. Go and faithful servant. Good, sorry, good and faithful servant. 
You have been faithful with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man with the two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted, with, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold, master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you, you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with a banker so that when I return, I will have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Amen. Can we can have a seat? It's look like, according to God, there is absolutely nobody who can claim that he has nothing. According to God, nobody can claim that I have nothing. Because if you look at this scripture, at the end, the Lord say, the one who does not have, they will take even what he has. So in other way, when people say, I don't have, in reality, they have something, but they don't realize that they have. That's why they will only see it the day it will be taken away from them. Then they realize, oh, I was having something, but I didn't know. Amen. Now, before me to go deep in the message, I want to make you understand a couple of things. The first one, I want you to understand about the kingdom of God. Because when you understand the kingdom of God, then my message of this morning will make sense. Now, the kingdom of God, Jesus, when he came on earth, he did not bring Christianity. Many people are thinking that Christianity, Jesus brought Christianity. Under bracket. So Jesus never brought Christianity. Jesus brought the kingdom of God. Now, if in your mind Christianity equal kingdom of God, then it's okay. But if in your mind Christianity means something else than the kingdom of God, you are you might be in trouble. For the kingdom of God, this is what Jesus came. He came for people to be introduced to the kingdom of God. He came for people to enter the kingdom of God. Now remember, even the word Christian or Christianity, it was not given by Jesus. People saw the disciple living in a certain way. I believe the way they were living is the ways of the kingdom. They were living the citizenship of the kingdom. They were displaying their citizenship. And when people saw the citizenship, they identified that way of living with the ways of a certain Christ, Mashiach, who lived loving people, doing good, delivering, doing signs and wonders. You know, they saw the very same thing in the disciple, and they say, these people are like the Messiah. Or the Mashiach. They are like Christ. Then they call them Christian. Like those who are following Lumumba, they call, they call them Lumumbist. Those who are following Branam, they call them Branamist. So those who are following Christ, the Mashiach, they call them Christian. But in reality, why they call them that is because they were displaying a certain behavior, which were the behavior of the kingdom. Am I making sense to somebody? Jesus came in Matthew 6.33. He said that, uh, seek first 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He never say seek to be Christian. He said seek first the kingdom of God. So what Jesus brought is the kingdom. And when he finished with them, he sent them to go preach the gospel. He said go and preach the kingdom of God. Tell them the kingdom is arrived. So what we go around and preaching, we are preaching our kingdom. Because the kingdom, people need to adhere. People need to enter in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, it is not a place. The kingdom of God is not a city somewhere. It is not a country located somewhere. The kingdom of God, it is every mind where Christ is reigning is the kingdom of God. Every human being who is under the reign of Christ is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the mindset of the reign of Christ. When Jesus is reigning, then we are in the kingdom of God. So when they say, when Jesus said, let your kingdom come, as he was teaching us to pray, he said, let your kingdom come, he was saying, let the reign of Christ let the principles of Christ, let the obedience of Christ come and be established. So you can bring the kingdom of God everywhere you are. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God is in you. Meaning, the first place where Christ should reign, it is in your life. And when Christ is reigning in your life, you will take the reign of Christ everywhere you go. When people look at your family, they will see that Christ is reigning in that family. The way you and your wife or you and your husband, you and your parent, you and your children, the way you are living, you are displaying the life of Christ. Then people will look at you, they'll ask you, what is different in your family? Why you never beaten your wife? Why you never cheated your wife? Why you never? Then you'll tell them, it is because I belong to a kingdom. You see, normally, People shall come to us and seek for the kingdom because the kingdom is nice because the, the kingdom is sweet imagine if you find yourself nearby a USA ambassador or Canada ambassador suddenly for one or another reason this gentleman or this, this lady become your friend. And then you discover that he is the citizen of uh, the USA or the citizen of, uh, of Canada where may everyone want to go. And then you realize he's the ambassador, not only a citizen, but he's an ambassador. You will be looking at that person, not only to keep him as a friend, but to give, him an, to give you an opportunity to enter their city, isn't it? You'll be with that person, but you will not miss the, the opportunity to tell him, my man, is there any way you can help me to enter Canada or to enter um, USA? Why? Because when you look at those countries, they look better than where you are. The kingdom of God looks better, not looks better. The kingdom of God is better than where people are. Because where people are is a place of pain, place of suffering, place of deception, place of sickness and disease. In the kingdom of God is a place of joy and peace. The problem people don't seek the, the kingdom of God is because they don't see that kingdom in you. When people see the kingdom of God in you, I'm telling you, they will come. There is a say in my language that says, fish only flow where water goes. Where water goes is in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a place of happiness and a place of joy. A place of healing, a place of deliverance. The problem, you and me were supposed to display the kingdom of God. We are not displaying the kingdom of God. We are displaying something else. When I say to display the kingdom of God, it is to display the reign of Christ in your life. When Christ is reigning, there is no more sickness. There is no more cheating. There is no more lying. There is no more failure. There is no more pain. There is always joy. Then people will ask you, what is the secret of your joy? Amen. Then you tell them, I belong to the kingdom of God. Amen. I am a citizen of uh, the USA. You know, these people are so proud to be citizens of the USA. Beloved, many years ago, we were amazed in the city where I was living because the city was in war. And then there was a civil war in that, my city. 
We were all running left and right. Now what happened is we saw four jeep of coming from the USA, from the USA embassy. It came to the next street of my street and it entered in a certain house. When it entered in the certain house, they told the owner of the house that I knew very well. They say to the, the owner of the house that we came here because this city is in trouble. And we got order to take out all the American citizen. And we learned that one of your child is an American citizen. So we cannot leave that child here because this city is the problem. We come to take our city, our, our, our citizen. You know, we were amazed. It was a small child who was born in America. By the way, if you are born in America, the fact that you are born in America, you are an American. So that child was born in America, came back to the city where I was living. And because my city was in trouble, the American, they came to collect their citizen. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? They came to collect their citizen. Now they start fighting. The father said, no, either you take all of us or you leave my child. If you want to take my child, you take all of us. We cannot leave. They said, you, you are not citizen. They said, no, he's my child. He's your citizen, but he's my child. If you want to take him, you must take all of us. You see how the citizens of this country are so proud. I don't understand. You belong to the greater city that never existed. You, to be, you belong to the citizen, to the city of heaven. The city which is not built by the things of this world. How you are not proud of your city. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is where the reign of Christ is. So the kingdom of God is not a place. The kingdom of God is a mindset. A mindset whereby Christ is reigning. Hallelujah. Now, because we are speaking about the kingdom of God, Jesus said in John chapter 3 verse 3, he said that very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. So for you to enter the city, the kingdom of God, you need to be born again. The only one way to belong to the city is to be born. I told you this gentleman was born in America. And because he was born in America, he makes him an American citizen. Also us, for you to, be, to belong to the kingdom of God, you need to be born to that kingdom. You need to be born to that kingdom. And for us to be born to that kingdom, we need to receive Jesus, our personal Lord and Savior, and to repent. Then we are born to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, every kingdom or every country has an economy. Economy is what makes the country or the city to be strong. The power of the city comes from its economy. If the economy is powerful, then the city will be a powerful city or the country will be a powerful country. You know, I was just checking and I found out that uh, the United States of America is the most powerful economy of the world. And this started since 1960 until today. The USA economy remains the most powerful economy, followed currently by China. So it's the most powerful economy. Now, what makes the, the economy to be powerful is something called, I say I'm going to be very much technical today. Please switch your mind into economic mind because we're going to speak about economy today. So what makes a country to be powerful is, is a GDP. Have you ever heard that word before? GDP. See the problem, you don't read. Now the GDP, what is the GDP? The GDP is the gross domestic product. In other, in simple term, every country produces things or um, services. Now, those services are converted into money value. Now, the money value of those services and those are product that the country is producing over a year is called GDP. Now, the United States of America, his GDP is around, in this year 2024, it is around uh, 28.78 trillion, trillion. Now, I was checking South Africa. We are not in a bad place because in South Africa, our GDP is the best one in Africa. But very much away from the GDP of the USA. Because our GDP is around 373 billion 
But now they are trillion, as we are billion. But we are the best one of Africa. We are the first before Egypt. Now, the very same way the GDP, as I told you, is the, the, the good or the services that a country produces that is put in a monetary value over a year, the GDP, the very same way the kingdom of God, us as a kingdom of God, we are in competition with the devil. And in that competition, we are looking which kingdom has the powerful GDP. Now, for the GDP to be powerful, it is the management of the economy, how people are managing it. And each economy has resources. Are you, are you lost or um, are you still with me? Are you lost? Okay, good. Now, every economy has resources. Don't worry. I'm going to define resources so, because I want you to understand. I say I'm borrowing things from the world so that you may understand the kingdom economy. Hallelujah. Because every country has an economy. Listen, what you are seeing in the world, the world is only coping what they see in the spiritual realms. The way you are seeing president and country organized, they are only coping what is happening in the spiritual realms. They are coping the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is also organized. And the kingdom of God should also have the GDP. The kingdom of God should also produce good and services. The good and services are what, called, what are called resources. The resources of the country. So now, if you manage the resources well, it will increase your GDP. African countries are poor not because they don't have resources. African countries, they have a lot of resources, a lot. But what makes them poor is the very poor management of their resources. If you go to a, a, a country like the DR Congo, this country is, they call it a, a geological scandal. It's like God was so tired and he took all the resources, he took all the, the, the precious minerals, he threw them in the DRC. Everything is in the DRC. Recently, there was a stone that produces electricity. Can you imagine that? A stone. They found out there is a stone. You just connect the, the, the wires. It produces electricity. A stone. Imagine that scandal geological. But this is the poorest country of the earth. I mean, one of. <laughs> to not exaggerate. What makes it poor? What makes it poor is what? Is uh, the poor management of uh, the resources. Because... If you go to certain country like the Qatar, Dubai, those people, they used to have petrol. But currently, their petrol is almost finished. They do not have any other resources. The only one resource they are having right now, it is tourism. They are making billion and billion of, of, of dinar through their, through their tourism, only tourism. One of the easy visa to get is the visa, the visa of the Qatar, the visa of Dubai. You get it so easily. They understood that if they make it easy, people will come. And as people are coming and going, they are increasing their GDP. They are increasing their services. They are increasing their economy. Am I making sense to somebody? Hallelujah. So now... Maybe I should define what economy is. Because this morning we're learning about the kingdom economy. What is economy? Now, there are two definitions of economy, but I am going to rely on the second one. Because this is what makes sense according to my message. Now, the first definition of economy, economy is the state of a country or a region in terms of production and consumption of good and service and the supply of money. You don't have to get that one. Now, this is the second definition of economy. The second definition of economy, economy is the careful management of available resources. What is, the, what is economy is? The careful 
management of resources. That is what I want you to get this morning. Economy is the what? The careful management of resources. Please, don't allow anybody to sleep. Somebody sleeping next to you, who is, just touch him. Wake up. Amen? What is economy? I say economy is careful management of available resources. Remember, I said, I said the word available purposely. Because you cannot manage the resources that you don't have. Hallelujah. So it's the careful management of resources. Now, I want you to understand that our God, he hates wastage. God doesn't want us to waste. He doesn't want us to waste resources that he has given us. Now, in the first scripture we've read, we learned that the, the, the master was about to go. He entrusted resources to each and every of his subject. He gave them resources. To one he gave five, to the other one he gave two, to the other one he gave one. Those are resources. We'll learn what resources mean. Now, God doesn't like people to waste resources. Our problem, because we are having a poor economy, a poor management of our resources, that's why we are losing a lot of things in our lives. Because we are wasting resources. If you read Mark chapter 6, verse 42 to 43, Mark 6, 42 to 43, the Bible says, They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciple picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces of bread and fish. Now maybe you can say the disciple decided to pick it up. But I can tell you, it is Jesus who told them to pick up because he didn't want a wastage. Now Jesus multiplied the five loaf of bread and the two fish. He multiplied them, and more than 20,000 people ate. The Bible said there were some broken pieces that was left there. The Bible said, Jesus said, take those broken pieces because I don't want wastage. I am a God who does very well my economy. I don't waste resources. Remember, those fish and those bread that Jesus multiplied became a commodity, became resources for those people who were hungry. They ate. Am I making sense to somebody? So it was a resource for this kingdom. That day the need was food. And Jesus provided food. And after eating, food was left behind. And these people, they wanted to leave it there. Jesus said, no, 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 no. Take it. To show you that God doesn't like wastage. There are many people here who are wasting the resources of God. Don't worry. We are going to speak about the resources. You will see that there are things that God entrusted you that you are wasting. There are things, resources that God has given you, but you are, you, you, you are not even aware that you have those resources. You see, if you don't know that you have resources, it's going to be a problem because you cannot manage them. And you cannot multiply them because you are not aware. You are like this guy who was having one talent. What he did, he went to put it because he said, that it's, what is this? He neglected the resources. Beloved, there are people who are neglecting the resources. You don't understand that whatever you have, as long as it's a resource, it can still produce, no matter how small it is. Somebody will need it. Do you know that in this, in this continent of Africa, there are certain people, they don't have anything else to offer. A country like Lesotho, they don't have anything to offer. They only have water to offer. But they are selling their water. <laughs> There are certain countries here, they don't have anything to offer. They only have coffee. They only plant coffee and they make sure that they plant enough coffee because they realize that they are, their land can produce coffee and they only, they only have coffee. They don't have diamond, they don't have, they don't have cobalt, they don't have all those uh, precious gold, uh, stone that we know. They only have coffee, but their economy is only residing on the production and the selling of coffee. You have something. Please tell your neighbor you have something. You have something, brother. The problem with you, 
You think that what you have is too small. It is too small that you're even neglecting it. That you think that this is not something. You are only looking at the one who can sing, who can preach. You say, that one has something. No, you have something. Hallelujah. Now, let me quickly tell you about management. Because I say economy is what? Is what? Economy is? Careful management of resources. Now, let me define management and refine, define resources. So that now we can fly. Because we're going to have all the tools that can help us to fly. What is management? Management can be defined as process of getting the work or the task the task done that is required for achieving the goal of an organization in an efficient and effective manner don't worry i'm gonna break it down what is management management is actually the process of getting all the task or the pro uh, or, or uh, the task that you need for you to reach the objective now every organization every country has objectives now for you to get those objectives you need to organize yourself with what you have to give everyone task what can we do with what we have so that you can reach our target that is management are you with me so management is that process of getting the work and the task done for us to reach our objective now the kingdom of god have an objective the objective of the kingdom of god is to win souls the the objective of the kingdom of god on earth is to win souls the kingdom of god on earth does not have objective to give you babies or to give you marriage or to give you money that is not the objective of the kingdom of god the kingdom of god on earth has the objective to recruit people members to his kingdom that is the the objective the objective of the kingdom of god is to recruit members to belong to the kingdom of god that is our objective now management is the process of getting the work or the task done so that you may reach that objective of winning souls are you with me i want you to follow me very well then you will understand that god cannot refuse you to become billionaire he cannot refuse that the moment you understand kingdom economy the problem God is afraid to give you what you're looking for, what you're asking for, because you haven't understood the kingdom economy. Hallelujah. So now, I say management is the process where you put all the tasks. You say, you will do this, you'll do this according to what we have so that we can reach our target, which is to win souls and to destroy the kingdom of the devil for that for us to do that we need resources because you cannot manage if there are no resources we have seen people they enter in a portfolio or in a ministry they say that you have been nominated to become the minister of transport but when you arrive in office there is no money no matter the good management you can have if there are no resources no people no money for you to do the job you will not going to achieve for you to achieve the job you need to know what to do but you need to have something to help you to do what you know how to do Amen. are you with me and what you need to have it is called resources what is resources resources a resource is a stock or supply of money, of material, of stuff, or other asset that can be drawn, uh, can be drawn, uh, drawn on by a person or an organization in order to function effectively. So resources are things that you need, material things that you need, people that you need, so that you can reach the target that is the resources are you with me so now 
When we do the careful management of the resources, it means that we are having the organization, we are organizing things that God put in our hand. We are working with them in a, in a manner that we can reach our target, which is to win souls. In other way, every resources God gave us has only one final purpose is the salvation of souls every resources god gave us have only one final purpose is the salvation of souls the many christians they don't understand that many pastors many people they don't understand that everything god gave you has only one final purpose salvation of souls Amen. hallelujah this is the reason why we need to do god's economy we need to do a careful management of what god gave us because if we don't do a careful management of what god gave us we will not going to reach our objectives this is the reason if you look our chairs are open because we do not understand that the resources that God gave us are for that purpose, people to be saved. I can tell you resources, we have them. I am going to show you the different resources that God has put in us. We say economy is the careful management of available resources. I'm not saying that non-available, but I'm saying available. I will show you right now that the resources, you have them. Please tell your neighbor you have the resources. You have the resources. The problem, you don't do a careful management. You don't understand that those resources, you need to use them. And because you don't do good management, that's why the end objective is not reached. Or maybe you don't know that the end objective is the, is the salvation of souls, is the winning of souls. Now, let's quickly go because of time. Let's learn the resources that God has, put, has given us. Quickly, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. 1 Corinthians 4, 7. The Bible says this. And I want you to understand this. For you to stop hitting your chest and showing us that uh, you are the one who have labored, who have done because of your intelligence. That's why you got whatever you got. I want you to put this, to put it deeply in your head and understand it one for all. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 says this. For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? The Bible is asking you, what do you have that you did not receive? People think that they receive things because they deserve them. Beloved, let me tell you, there is absolutely nothing that you deserve. If there is one thing that you deserve, it is hell. Because it is a normal salary of your sins. Hell is the only thing that you deserve. You can tell me, no, but I went to school. I studied for many years. I sacrificed myself. Who was giving you the strength to do what, whatever you did? Who was giving you the ability to study? Who was helping you to achieve what you have achieved? It was God. So, in other way, there is nothing that you have that is not given to you. Everything you have, it is given to you. Even the salary that you are earning, you are earning every month, it is something that God has given you. Amen. When somebody understood now that the money I'm going to collect every month, every month, every end of month from the company where I work, it is something that I receive from God, he will understand that I cannot just use this money anyhow. I cannot just do anything that I want with this money because I receive it from somebody. Bankers, they are managing millions, but they know very well that those millions do not belong to them. They cannot just decide to do whatever they want with the million that they are managing. I have my banker who manages my money, but he cannot just take my money and send wherever he wants. I tell him, pay this guy, pay this guy. And even though he doesn't want, because it is my money, and I say, pay this guy, he will pay. The problem with you 
You think that your money it is yours. When God says release, you start rebuking the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. That is not the spirit of God. That is the spirit of poverty. That is the spirit of servitude. They want to make me a slave. <laughs> now, let go to the resources. I found for you six resources that we need to use. We need to do a good management. Please tell your neighbor next to you, neighbor, wake up. Wake up because you are dealing with very serious matters. Don't allow the enemy to steal it from you. Now, the first, the first resource that we have from the Lord, that resource is called time. Time is the first commodity, a first resource that God has given to us. When you open your, mouth, your, your eyes in the morning and you realize you're alive and you look at your time, that time is given to you, that is the first resource that God has given to you. Time God gave it to all of us at equal amount. God does not give the rich people 25 hours and the poor people 22 hours. He gives 24 hours to everyone. It is not that the pastor got 25 hours and you, you got 22 hours because you're a believer. He gives 24 hours to each and every human being. All of us. May you be white, may you be black, may you be tall, may you be small, may you be smart, may you be stupid. All of us, we have 24 hours. Now, the outcome depends on how we are managing our 24 hours. There are people who use their 24 hours only in front of phones. He will spend all his day, half of his day, he will spend it on phones. Other people use their time to sleep. Other people use their time to talk. Other people use their time to labor. At the end of the day, the result we got, it is the management of our time. Time is a currency. It buys things that you spend the time doing. Are you with me? Times is a currency. It buys things that you spend time doing. Hallelujah. So time is our first currency. Hence the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. Ephesians 5 verse 16 says, Making the most of every time, every opportunity, because the days are evil. There is the myth of no time. Listen to this. No time is a myth. For you will always have time for what you cherish the most or what you love the most. You cannot say that I did not have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. That not having time is a myth. You know a myth? A myth is something that doesn't exist. It is when people say, Hey, I'm too busy, Papa. Hey, I'm too busy to come to church. You are lying. The day you will have demons following your life, I'm telling you, you'll be coming to church every time of church because you know that I need church now. We've seen people when they're in trouble, they'll be the first one. You will call your pastor, the church is still closed. Oh, can you can somebody open for me? You can say, Ah. You use your time on things you think that they are priority for you. There is no myth of no time. No, that is just a myth. No time, it is a myth. I'm too busy, it is a myth. You are too busy on the things you think that are more important for you. Time, it is a resource that God has given you. How are you using your time? The people are using their time on useless things. I always tell my children, when they're spending time on TV, I tell them, you see these people are watching on TV, they have made it in their life. That's why you are watching them. What are you doing so that in five years to come, you may be watched also on TV? What do you do for people to watch you? What do you do for people to give you five minutes to watch you? The very same way you are watching those movies. You see the movie you are watching? These people, they have made it. That's why you are watching them. You are reading the books of this person while you are wasting your time. You are reading, you are passing time on the TikTok of somebody. Because that person has made it, has used his time or her time to make something that is wasting your time. You are buying, time is money that you are using to buy things. 
how do you use your time? Are you using this resource called time for the kingdom of God? The Bible says that uh, we should do the most of every opportunity, every time. What do you use the time for? Look when they say, let's go for evangelism. You make sure you come the latest possible. You look at you see me walking on the street of Rustenburg. Telling people about Jesus. No, it's too degrading. You don't understand. The kingdom where you belong. You don't understand. I'm always impressed when I see great people. I see engineers. I see doctors. I see nurses. I see president going around speaking about Jesus Christ. Going on the street. Those are the people who have understood. You haven't reached yet. You just bought a new car. It's my car. Going around. Telling people about Jesus. No. You make sure you come late. Oh, are you finished? You have been lying to us. Are you done? Oh, I'm late. We know you came late purposely. You see, the, the good thing with our God, our God knows the intention beyond every action. You may fool us, we can be fooled, thank you, but you'll never fool our God. He will give you the rightful salary of your works. Hallelujah. I'm sorry to be rash, but I need to tell you the truth. How do you manage your time? You have 24 hours. How many hours do you give? To Remember, our objective is what? To win souls. Every resources must be used for the salvation of souls. What do you do? How many time do you give for people to know Jesus? For people to be saved? I'm not saying for people to come to church. I'm speaking about people to be saved. How many time? How many hours? Look at how many time you spend on TV, on WhatsApp, on TikTok, on whatsoever, social media. You are wasting time. The Bible said there is no time. The Bible, I like it in French. They say buy back the time. In French they say buy back the time. But there's no more time. Look at the time we come to church. Look at the time we are locating things of God. When we just, when we just pass a little bit. Today is, uh, is Sunday. We must finish at 12. When is uh, uh, close to 12, you start looking at the time. Looking at the time. Ah, this pastor is talking too much. But when you are watching a movie, you are spending time watching a movie of four hours. There is a movie that I know is four, it's called 24 Hours Chrono. That movie goes 24 hours. So you can literally be seated on your, on, on, your, on your seat for 24 hours watching the same movie. And people are doing that. And Christians are doing that. And children of God are doing that. And men and women of God are doing that. Brothers, do you understand that you are wasting the resources of the kingdom? God has given you the 24 hours. What are you doing for the kingdom? How many souls are you winning? How many people are you bringing back to Christ? Or how many people are you sending to hell? This is the first resource, time. The second resource is called good health. Good health. Your health that you're having, that good health, it is a resource that God has given you for you to use it. Because there are people who cannot stand and walk. There are people who are in the hospital, they cannot have the strength that you have. Beloved, I don't know if you've never been sick. I had a problem with my foot. So painful that I can't walk myself. Then I start appreciating the walking. The fact that you walk, it is a blessing. Amen. The fact that you, are, you can move yourself, it is a blessing. It is a resource God has given you. What do you do with the body that God has given you? Many people are saying it's my body. I can do whatever. It is not your body. It's God's resources for the kingdom of God. Amen. You must use your health to win souls. God is giving you good health every day because he wants you to continue to speak. There are people today, they can't speak anymore because they were struck by stroke. They can't do that when they are walking. Beloved, if you still walk, the way you're walking is a resource. Use it for the kingdom of God. If you can still speak with your mouth, use your mouth to win souls. Not to use your mouth to destroy people's life. 
take people away from the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The lungs God has given you, it is not for smoke. When you go every day with your smoke, you are destroying the resources. You are, when you're going to have tuberculosis, you're not going to have the ability to go and win souls for Jesus because you'll be somewhere in the hospital. Stop eating anyhow because you're going to get diabetes. Stop eating anyhow because you're going to get hypertension. Stop eating anyhow because you're going to get gout. And then you will not going to be able to do the, king, the things of the kingdom of God any longer. Okay, I know there are certain... Disease that comes from themselves, no matter what you do, people can, it can come from genetic, like diabetes, hypertension, certain times it comes from just genetically. But there are people who are getting diabetes because of their bad habits. There are people who are ending their life with the cancer of the liver because they are taking too much alcohol. And then when you have it, you come to church. Pastor, let's pray. Let's pray. Pastor cannot sleep anymore. Pastor, two, two o'clock. Pastor, it's painful. Let's pray. Let, when you were taking your alcohol, you didn't know about the pastor. Good health. It is an asset God gave you. It is a commodity. It is a resource. Don't take it for granted. That good health, go outside. Now that you have the strength to walk, walk. Go and win souls for Jesus. You have your two legs. Go outside. Do something. You can speak. Scream. Tell people. You can see. Use those eyesight and win souls for Jesus. I told you, every um, resources are only having one objective. To win souls. You see the nice body God gave you. The nice body. <laughs> okay. You are too much serious. Let me make you laugh. Yesterday, I was showing my daughter a video that makes me laugh. There's this young lady who was preaching the gospel. He goes to those young guys, he's preaching them the gospel. They just turn away, they run away. They don't want to listen to her. If she follows them, they run away. She was wearing uh, nicely, comfortably. Then she looked at them saying, mm, I will see you. She went, removed that thing, was wearing very nice. She just put a leggings now. Then she's passing, believe in Jesus, believe it. Uh, those guys start following her. Uh, say, oh, you refuse now that I wear like this, you're following. Are you sure you're following this or you're following Jesus? I'm not saying that you should do that way. Eh? That is not a good way. <laughs> Hallelujah. The body God gave you when it's attracting women, don't think that God attracts them for nothing. He attracts them to you so that you can present to them the kingdom of God. One day, we went for evangelism somewhere in the in a Platinum Village. And as we were talking, I met young people and I'm talking to them. As I'm talking to them, I don't know what happened. In my conversation, I told them that I'm 50 years old. They were like, you? No. No, you can't be 50. 50, you? No, you can't be 50. I said, yes. I said, no. 50, you can't be. Yes. Beloved, I told them, you know who's giving me this? It's Jesus Christ. He's maintaining me. Because there's no alcohol in me. There's no smoke in me. There's no wasting time in me. That's why I keep myself. Beloved, when you are coming in the presence of God, you are renewed. Even your cells are renewed. Even your face is renewed. The Bible says, when Moses went to the mountain, he spent 40 days. When he came back, his face was shining. What I'm trying to say, everything God gave you in your body is for the glory of God. Amen. Don't use it for any pride. If he gave you a nice face, that nice face is to attract, attract people. You know, there's some people that will listen to you because of your nice face. As you are talking, he's looking at your nose. Oh, this nose. That nose is a asset for you to bring that person to Jesus Christ. Am I making sense to somebody? Yeah. The third commodity or the third resource it is called others, other Christians, other brothers and sisters, other people God gave you are also a resource that you must use carefully. 
You must know that the people God gave you, he gave you them so that you may use them or you may work together for the salvation of other people. The children that God gave you, the husband that God gave you, the wife that God gave you, the people that God gave you, those people are also resources that you must manage correctly. The brothers that you have, the sister that you have, the husband you have, the wife you have, are also constituting a asset, a resource. Hallelujah. That's why you cannot just treat anyhow the brother next to you because he's a resource. Together. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians that we, all of us, we are like a body. And each and every one of us plays a specific role in the body. There are some their eyes, some are hands, some are legs, some are head. You know, we all of us we constitute a body. So if you want to have a healthy body for you to achieve things, you must allow every part of the body to be in good health. Amen. But unfortunately, what we do, we don't manage our brothers. You know, it is always so painful when I meet, I meet somebody outside and I talk to the person. And the person will, will refuse, refuse. Now, when I will, I will go deep with the person, sit the person and ask the person, why you are no longer coming to church? Most of the time, the person will tell me, brother so and so told me that that church, there is this and that. That's why I decided I'm not going to come anymore. But now I'm asking myself, what is your role as a child of God? Is to destroy or to build? Is to bring people close to Jesus or to take them out of Jesus Christ? When you are telling people whatever you are saying, are you telling them those things for people to remain in the Lord or to go away from the Lord? Are you building the kingdom of God or you are destroying the kingdom of God? And there are people who are, who are revealing me nowadays terrible things. You know, if, if God was not on our side, you can just drop everything and say, God, I'm leaving everything. What people go and say outside. Terrible things. Let the Lord have mercy on you. Because you are destroying the body of Christ. The body of Christ needs to be together. You know, there is a sickness. I just forget how you call that sickness. It's a neurological sickness. Whereby the left side of the body starts fighting the right side of the body. So if I hold the microphone, this hand will take away the microphone. So imagine a person like that. When the, the, this leg wants to go, this other one wants to go. Now imagine how you're going to be. So a person can give order, only one part of the body answers, the other part doesn't answer. Imagine if the body is like that. This is what is happening in the church of the living God. You don't understand that the brother next to me is also an asset. is a resource. I must protect this brother. I must protect this sister. There are things I cannot tell this brother. Even if they are true. Because I know I can destroy his faith. Faith is built by what, by what is said or what is heard. But faith is also destroyed by what is heard and what is said. So if you are a destroyer, God will destroy you. No matter how you can be. Don't destroy the brother for whom Jesus died. There are people that don't come to church anymore. They are back to their, their life. Because you went there, tell them, that, oh, the pastor is a drunker. And then the pastor, the, and the poor people, because it's you, people believed. And then the guy said, ah, if a pastor is a drunker, let me also go and drink. Now the guy is back to his bad life. Have you built or you have... Build, have you built or you have destroyed the life of that person? You have destroyed. So easy. And other people are using the money God give them to organize a dinner and feed the people with those nonsense. God must have mercy. Your brother is an asset. Can you please tell your neighbor that uh, you are my asset? He's your asset. Your brother next to you is an asset. He's an asset you need to protect. You need to keep. Is an asset. Hallelujah. The third one, because of the fourth one, sorry, because of time, is wealth. Wealth. Somebody say wealth. wealth. Money. Zimbu. Money, wealth, mama, God give you 
that one it is also a asset or a resource God gives you for the kingdom. What do you do with your money? Do you use your money to promote the kingdom of God to win souls or do you use your money to destroy the kingdom of God? The money God gave you. The asset God gave you. The resource God gave you. What, how do you use your money? How do you use your money? You see, people always say, I will never give my tithe. Why should I give? Never. Never. For this man to, to eat it, who told you that this man is eating your money? Who told you that? Who is telling you that we are eating your money? Anyway, if you have to eat it, what is wrong about that? Because the Bible says that he who work in the pulpit eat from the, the pulpit. What could have happened to me if I don't work? If I was not having a secular job? Should I not eat because I'm your pastor? Should I die of anger because I'm your pastor? Seriously? But there, when you go to other, other places, you give without looking. Wealth, money, God gave you is a resource. And that resource God has given you, you must use your money for the kingdom of God. You must use your money for people to be saved. How often have you ever sent your money for the salvation of somebody? How often have you said that I'm going to send this, uh, this, uh, this amount of money to buy electricity for people to be saved, for us to do broadcasting? How often have you said that uh, I am going to send this money to buy chair for the church for people to sit? This is how we can win soul. Or I will use my data not just to put nonsense on my, on my WhatsApp, but I will make sure that I preach on my WhatsApp your own money. Hallelujah. A couple of days ago, one of the leaders put for us something beautiful in our leaders group. It was giving us five reasons why God has given us the money or the resources. Now, before me even to say that, there is a late great man of God called uh, Dr. Miles Monroe. I don't know if you know him. He's one of my my preferred preachers, uh, Miles Monroe said, when the purpose of something is not known, abuse is inevitable. When the purpose of something is not known, abuse is inevitable. Because you don't know why God is giving you money. You were here. We are praying with you. You were not even having money. Nothing. We will pray with you, give you money. Now God has lifted you up. You don't understand why God has given you that opportunity to have the million now having the money that you're having. God gives you those, the, the, that money for a purpose, for his kingdom. That money you have is for the, the kingdom of God. If you don't know why God gives you the money, you'll misuse the money. You'll be having now a lot of girlfriends, one in this place, one in the other place. One the, listen, let me tell you under bracket. Do you who are living with girlfriend and whatever, you are wasting your resources. You are married, but you are having nyati here, nyati there. Remember all those nyatis, they want money. Now I'm asking myself, why the nyati, they don't give money? They only want to be given money. Anyway, I don't know. But all of them, they'll come to you. Hey, you know, all the, the things they used to take care of. Now that you are there, they are your nyati, they don't take care of that anymore. You have to take care of them now. Let's give money. The money you were supposed to give to the church. Now you cannot give to the church anymore. You can't give tight anymore because you have to share that money with all the nyatis. As we don't know. But don't worry. You and God knows. You see the problem? You and God, you know. And as we're speaking here, you know. In your heart, you're like, hey, but you know. There is only one way. Free yourself from those things. Tell them, I have my wife. No matter how ugly she can be, she is my wife. I'm going to accept that ugliness. I'm the one who chooses that ugliness. Beloved, when you accept what God has given you, you'll start seeing it beautiful. Amen. Your husband will become beautiful. Your wife will become beautiful because you've accepted her the way she is. By the way, it was your choice, Moses. Five reasons why God gave you the money that you're having. The first one is to give to the kingdom of God. 
I'm not going to go into details because of time. God gives you the money to give to his kingdom. The second reason why God gives you money is to take care of your family, not the nyatis, not the people around. Those are wasting the monies. God gave you the money for to take care of your family. The Bible says, he who does not take care of his family has denied faith. There are people outside, they know him as the giver. But in, the, in his own house, he doesn't give. Children are suffering, wife is suffering, people are suffering. What's wrong with you, brother? Sister, what's wrong with you? Why you don't take care of your family? The third reason why God gives you the money is to, to carry out your calling. Your calling as a child of God, you have your calling. People think that for me to do the work of God, church must give you me money. No, you can do the work of God with the money that God is giving you. People don't want to go to evangelists. I don't have, I don't have. When it comes to evangelization, uh, evangelist with your own car, you look for petrol. Pastor, can we have the petrol? But when you go and fetch people where we've seen together, you pay petrol yourself. Come on, guys. What's going on with us Christians of today? Kingdom economy. Hallelujah. The fourth reason why God gives us money is to help others. Now, please don't put the nyati in the others. Because say, you see, pastor, I'm helping. You're not helping me. You are sinning. Hallelujah. To help the poor. And the last reason why God has given us the money is to enjoy. God is not, is not, is not against you enjoying your money. To go sometime buy a nice suit or take your children somewhere, spend some good time, or go to the restaurant, has a nice meal. Listen, before I thought that when I go and buy something new, I feel my pain in the heart, like, hey, maybe God is not happy. Then God told him, no, I'm your father. I'm, I'm, I'm okay when you go and spoil yourself sometime. But before you start spoiling yourself, check first if the four things above have been reached. Don't just spoil yourself. Check first how much I'm giving to the kingdom of God. How much I'm giving to my family. How much I'm giving to the calling that I have. You have a calling an evangelist. Go outside. Go win souls on your own account. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of time, let me quickly finish. The fifth thing, the fifth resource is called spiritual gift. The gift that God gave you, the spiritual gift, you can read that in 1 Corinthians 12, 7. The spiritual gift are also resources God gave you. The speaking in tongue, miracles, gift of healing, gift of knowledge. All those things are also resources God gave you. I've seen people, he has received all the gift of the spirit. Now, for somebody to come and know the will of God through him, he must pay 5,000 rand. Prophetic consultation. And every prophetic consultation, 5,000 rand. Maybe you should try it here. Me, since I'm not a prophet, I'm a pastor, I'm going to call it pastoral uh, consultation. We'll find how much you can start. <laughs> Beloved. The Bible says you receive freely, give freely. Am I making sense to somebody? The gift that God has given you, use those gifts to win souls, to destroy the kingdom of the, of the enemy. Use the gift God gave you to win souls. I don't have any time anymore. The last one is the power of God. People are abusing the power of God. The power of God has been given to the church so that you may win souls. Jesus said it in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. You will go witness about me. The power of God is used to witness for Jesus. There are people who are using the power of God for other things. To conquer girls, to conquer men, to conquer people. The, the, the power of God is for the kingdom of God. The power is the ability to influence, to impact, to impose your will. Actually, to impose the will of God, which is every man to be saved. We use our power of a pastor to abuse people, to 
abuse girls, to abuse women. We use our power of whatever power God has given us to abuse others. No, the power has been not given to you to abuse. The power has been given to you to build the kingdom of God. Amen. You see, there was a, a man in the Bible. His name was Simon the Sorcerer. He was called Simon the Sorcerer. He saw Peter praying for people receiving the Holy Ghost. He gave him money. He said, can you please give me that power? So that me also. I be. There are people who are receiving the power of God. They are misusing the power of God. We can see them the way they are doing. Beloved, let me land and tell you this. How are you managing the kingdom resources? Are you wasting the kingdom resources or you are using efficiently the resources God has given you? Are you doing kingdom economy or you are mismanaging what God has given you? Look at yourself. It's true it is your body. It is true it's your money. But how do you manage it? What God put in your hand, your time, your gift. For you to come and sing, we must beg you the gift. For you to come and work for God, we must beg you. Beg you. We must have, we must pay you. If you don't pay, you, you're not going to come and uh, play. You're not going to come and sing. You don't understand that this is a resource that you need to use for the kingdom of God. Purify. Rise up on your feet. Please. I want to burn for you. Only for you. Take my life as a sacrifice. I want to burn.